what that means is that our primitive programming that we now sometimes would call system one or the chimp or our emotional thinking is still working on the same way. We don't want to be shamed because that has significant consequences for us, which means if you start thinking about that, that can link into a fear of failure. The question is from Thinking Focus. Hi, I'm Ricky. Hi, I'm Rich. And today, the question is, what causes us to fear failure? What does that mean, Rich? I think we all feel this, don't we? We all feel a fear of... We build things up to be really important, don't we? Yeah, yeah. And it comes back to um, a primal programming that we've got. You know, so hundreds of thousands of years ago, we lived in small tribes in barren wastelands. Yorkshire. Or whatever. <laughs> if you like, yeah. <laughs> yeah there's a comparison there. Yeah. Sorry for everybody else that in lives broad in Yorkshire. Acres. Um, and we lived in tribes. And one of the things that we needed to, <laughs> things you needed to do was be accepted by the tribe. Because if you weren't accepted by the tribe, if you were shunned or shamed, you were pushed out from the tribe. So what would cause you to be shunned or shamed then? <laughs> I mean, I wasn't around, but maybe you'd gone off and tried to um, make friends with a different tribe. Maybe you disagreed with the leader of the tribe. Maybe you didn't bring any food back. Maybe you didn't bring any food Pull back. Pull your weight around the yeah. camp or maybe whatever Maybe you tried to mate with somebody else's mate. Oh, Right? So those sorts of things might have caused shame. Rob might know about this, though. He would have been around in these times, wouldn't (laughs) he? Oh, that's harsh. (laughs) That's harsh. (laughs) Um, But any of these things might have caused shame. What What would that have meant? It might have meant that the tribe push you out. What would that mean? That means you're now exposed and there's a risk of death. Because then safety in numbers was the key thing, wasn't it? Safety in numbers was the key thing. So, So really, we've all got two primal fears. One is death. And the other is shame, although shame leads back to death. Well, in, you, in, in those instances. Be, how can you be ashamed if you're dead? <laughs> so if you, the you know, point being, if you're pushed out, yes, you're more likely, more likely to be exposed. So what that means is that our primitive programming that we now sometimes would call system one or the chimp in us or our emotional thinking um, – is still working on the same way. We don't want to be shamed because that has significant consequences for us, which means, if you if you like, if you start thinking about that, that can link into a fear of failure. If I fail, what does that mean? Am I going to be judged by people? That's interesting because we had the upgrade, didn't we, that separates us from animals generally yep. in terms of our ability to think and do what we do as so human to be beings. Rational, to think rationally, to analyse, to, you know, look at look at information and make sense of it, to be calm, to make judgments, make decisions. But we didn't get that upgrade with that primal element, the bit that keeps us safe. So we still sense danger, yep. even though actually, you know, the chimp is that much stronger. I think they he talks about eight or ten times stronger than our Faster. capacity yeah. um, to to rationalise what's actually going on because so the majority of fears these days aren't what they used to be. Yeah. Still some, but they aren't what they used to be. Really interesting because actually you know, the, chimp, the chimp or the system one is much, much quicker. So it will get information faster. And if we act upon it, then we're not necessarily well, – whilst that system is there to help you, as you just described – it might not be the help that you need. Might not you, be right. Might not be right. The judgment might not be right. Judgment not, might not be right. So if you put that in a business context, you know, this could be around status in the office. What if someone's been picked to work on the project and you weren't? Right. What does that mean? Do you feel shamed? What if you didn't hit your sales target, somebody else did? Do you feel shame? Well, it, it's interesting because actually in some organisations, particularly when I was in financial services um, quite early on, um, there was one renowned organisation where it basically said the bottom ten percent get fired. Yeah, and you get that. Oh, you hear those stories from uh, US-based business, don't you? They just yes. take the, the bottom whatever percent, and they're fired every year. Yeah. So that that reaction that you might get to that could be a very system one chimp reaction. So it causes us to feel fear failure, which causes us then potentially to 
think that your status has diminished. So status becomes important, doesn't it? Which might mean that you're more likely to get involved in politics or degrading activities of other people to okay. make yourself look look better. So we start looking for opportunities to increase our stock or show us to be higher value than perhaps yeah. we are at times. So we're compensating in order to avoid being singled out or exposed. Yeah. And we see this at work. I suppose an easy, an, easy, um, an easy example of it is if you think about teenagers at school and having been there, we remember what that was like. You know, oh, when, a long time ago. When I was at school, we, one of the things we didn't have was we didn't have school uniform. You just wear what you wanted to school. Oh, that's worse. Minefield. Absolute minefield. Because when, when I was at school, it was all about what trainers we were wearing. Yeah. So if you were wearing Nike Air... Or you were wearing, as well, I remember. You are younger than me, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you were in Nike Air or you were wearing Puma Deciders, as they were called, or whatever, Adidas, whatever, you you were all right. You know, you were you were in the tribe. But if you came in a pair of Gola, or there used to be these trainers called Nicks, I don't even remember them. Oh, no. So that, you were you were pushed out. You were shamed for what you were wearing on your feet. But it... But the- or, I mean, I, I remember that at my school, you know, the branding of your shirt, of your trousers, you know, your mum had to go and get you a pair of farrows. You know, that's how old I am. Yeah. Um, you know, I think they've gone around five times since then. But but you, you everything you wore singled you out in terms of being in or out of the tribe, as you say. So what we what we don't want to do is is have that fear of shame because the fear of shame pushes you out of the group which again is a, a, you know, you've got this fear of failure thing going on. So it magnifies up into that. So what if I don't achieve the sales target? What if I don't um, get selected on the project? What if I don't get the promotion? What does that mean? And it does start to, to tip into self-esteem and things like that because you've you've attached, what, what's dangerous if, if I attach failure to my self-esteem? You know, so if I... Uh, don't win the big contract with a customer that we've been trying to get and we've been working on it for months. If I don't win that piece of work, that agreement, that tender, whatever that might be, yeah. then does that reflect badly on me and who I am as a person? And that can then, my self-esteem and the stories I might start to tell myself really can impact my fear of failure. So I don't want to fail. So what do I do? I play it safe. I try and stay, stay in the tribe. I, stay and, I try and have behaviours or match those things that are around me. So I try and fit in I effectively. Try and, I try and fit in, which can can bring a culture in a business of non-risk-taking, non-innovating, um, you know, where we tend to then just do the same thing over and over again, which might not be to the benefit of the business or the marketplace. And that reminds me of the book, David Marquette, and the um, he was a submarine commander and he was trained to operate a particular submarine yep. when all of a sudden... Turn the ship around, is it? Turn the ship around. Yeah. And when all of a sudden, thank you, when all of a sudden he was basically put in charge of a submarine he hadn't been trained to run, yeah. and now he was completely reliant on his on his crew, yeah. um, and he noticed that actually he got some people that were playing it safe, playing not to fail yep. as, a pl- as opposed to playing to win. So, you know, it's interesting that, you know, are we fearing failure? Yep. Or are we prepared to have a go, stick our neck out and 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 risk failing, but also potentially learning some stuff along the way? So that brings us to then, if you think about that, so there's a couple of things you made me think of there is how when we've talked about tribes, you could just talk about culture yes. in a business. What's the culture like in your tribe? Um, but and also, that tribe could be teams, departments, yeah. or the organization. Or the whole thing. All of them. Yep, yep. But then you also go, this then start. how do we counter this? Well, if you can view things like you just said there, you made me think about growth mindset. So it's rather than it being we must win or it's either win or lose. Yes. Absolutes, win or lose, black or white. You start to go, what, do you, what, what about win or learn? We didn't win, but what did we learn? Yes. So we're more equipped to win next time. And if the tribe doesn't push, if if you're in a tribe or a culture that pushes out a loser, 
then you never learned, yeah. I, I always think this with with football managers, right? So we know it's cutthroat, yeah, right. Football management is cutthroat, isn't it? If you le- lose three or four games, doesn't matter who you are on the trot, three or four on the trot, questions start to be asked. Now, and you see football clubs, they appoint a manager there for I don't know, three months, four months. They lose a few games, they sack them, and they sacked them right at the point when the stuff that they're learning starts to become really relevant. And they have to go back to the beginning again because they bring someone else in, start again. But it's also the short-termism of that type of management approach because all of a sudden you win a few games and you're singled out as you've got the secret sauce. And the reality is you haven't got the secret sauce. You've just um, either been lucky or you've learned some stuff that worked in that particular game or or environment and then all of a sudden it's like we you know we've seen it in business a lot of the times people get promoted and then they go but they're not doing well because well they're now in a new environment and they've got to learn but did you promote them based on a false view of success yeah so did we create this view that success looks like these characteristics and therefore we promote them or did you promote them based on their behavioral approach to this which and will how help they, them in the next role which will help them always if they can if they've got a particular approach or a particular way of doing things that that will play out as a win and learn mentality more often because we can't win all the time, right? Yeah, and, and this is why if you go back to the football analogy, it's almost like saying there is no room for failure. So therefore, you're kind of saying there is no room for learning. Well, Michael Jordan, LeBron James, James Dyson. Um, Who's you a know, basketball player? James uh, Dyson. No, he, 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 <laughs> I was trying to bring some balance um, <laughs> in terms of the uh, vacuumless um and we're going to call it a Hoover, but you can't. Oh, Everybody can't. calls them Dysons these yeah. days, don't they? But but they will talk about the lessons learned yeah. in order to get to where. So when they are in the position in the basketball example to take that winning shot, they know they can make it because they've already failed thousands of times before. So we have to be careful then, don't we, to go that absolutes aren't, aren't good. Clearly, in business, we want you know a number of things. We want a, we want growth. We want good revenues, we want a profitable business, all that kind of stuff, and all that's great. But we have to be careful that we don't go, it's win or lose, because actually all the learning, there's a lot of learning in winning, but there's a lot of learning in losing. And if we if we create tribes or cultures that fear failure and therefore avoid failure, what that causes is not to get the learning. Well, you get average, don't you? You yeah, get a culture get of average. average. You're going to get average. One of, one of the other things as well is... Um, you have to be careful of the way that you speak to yourself as well. So again, it, you know, it might be a modern world thing. It might be some things we pick up in the media. I'll give you another example that will come from a, a sporting world where, you know, where teams go, it's a must win game or it's a must win race or I have to succeed because what you've done there is you've created a very, very high bar. Well, there can only be one winner, right? There's nothing wrong with being aspirational. There's nothing wrong with aiming high, but you also have to be aware that if you're competing in anything, whether it's business or sport or whatever it is, you know, if you're a budding actor going for a role, you're competing yes. with somebody, aren't there's you? There's only one part. Right, so you're competing with other people. Therefore, there's a chance that you might not succeed. So the language of I must is quite dangerous. What's much more helpful is I'd like to, I'm aiming to, I'm hoping to. My goal is. My goal is. So that language is not absolute. That language allows you to realise that all you can do is your best. And I suppose we see quite a bit of this playing out in in the modern age of social media, for example, where you know people are always putting the good news stories on. I've been promoted, and you know we've done this, we've achieved that. They rarely put on the fact that they've they failed at something. <laughs> had a terrible meeting yeah, today. Had a with terrible a... meeting. Lost the biggest con- <laughs> biggest contract to me in life. Failed to failed to win that customer we've been working on for three years. What what uh, I heard um, Bear Grylls the other day. Brilliant, um, uh, brilliant interview with him when he said, and I'll get this slightly wrong. I'll try and paraphrase it, but he said, "Character is built in the valleys. Don't stay too long at the mountain top." Which is what you just said there. Yeah. You, your character, your learning comes from 
the difficult times doesn't necessarily come from all the victories that you get. Now, of course, the learning can come from that. But if you go back to what you said about social media, one of the challenges that we have today is we're trying to see social media forces us to try and seek acceptance from the world. Of course, yeah. From everyone. And of course, you're going to present your best self, impression management, you're going to manage and we want the likes. way others perceive you. Yeah, we want likes, we want all that stuff, don't we? Well, right? likes kick the dopamine, don't they? Dopamine and... hit, all that stuff. The interesting thing is, what I what I really need is I just need acceptance from my tribe. Yes. I don't need it from everyone. And if you if you if you seek it from everyone, which social media often forces us to do, you're likely to find yourself quite unhappy because you're seeking something that's almost impossible to get. Well, you can't make everybody happy. You can't make everybody like you. And it's it, you know, I've got teenage kids, and you know. If you if you're on social media seeking acceptance from everyone, and social media is so prevalent for them, and the peer precious part of the brain's going haywire, yeah, it's very very difficult to find happiness going after that. What's more important is who are, who are my tribe, who are my family, who are my close friends, who do I want to be around, and who gives me energy and and all that kind of stuff. That's the group that you look to seek acceptance from. And it's again same in business. Think about cultures in the business. Think about tribes in the business. It well, it comes back to um, you know the book that we've read, that longitudinal study, the Good Life, that's yeah. eighty odd years long and going, um, and and it all boils down to relationships and quality of relationships, um, and 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 that's really about you know what matters to my tribe yeah. and that that's your your inner sanctum if you like that's the people that you care most about that that care most about you and it's what they think that matters it's and it's a bit of learning you see as well that because right so I'll, I'll make a leap here right we know each other the wrong time i think you like me right that is a leap well, i told you it was a leap a good leap if if someone else comes along i'm more likely to work harder on that relationship because i don't know if they do like me than I am on ours because I've generalized and normalized the fact that you do. That's interesting. Or do we make a judgment around that? Do we make a value assessment of whether they can help? Are they a threat? Possibly. Is the chimp it, kicking it, in and go, they're a threat? Possibly. Is the chimp kicking in and going, no, they're fine, they're fine. The chimp wants to be liked. System one wants you to be liked. So yes. it's going to work hard on can I, can I achieve that? Which again isn't because you, you're never going to achieve that from everyone. So if we come back to fear, fear of failure, you sort of go: Is if I fail, is it really that bad? Have I made this a must? I must. I really must. It's it's so important. Whereas actually, is it? What are the what's the worst here? So it's this win or learn. What will I learn if it doesn't go? And how do I turn that into something that's interesting? Back to Bear Grylls' comment of characters built in the valleys. Yeah. Um, how can I make sure I'm not attaching my self-esteem to failure? And that failure is important in life and it's something we're all going to have lots of. And let's not ignore it. And not, but one other counter thing for it is to let's focus on what we want, not what we don't want. Because one of the things many of us do is... We're trying to do something, but we're focused on, I don't want it to go wrong. Yes. Rather than... Play it safe. Yeah. I don't want it to go wrong, so I'll play it safe rather than my goal is, my aim is, my hope is. And that's because if we set ourselves goals and we don't hit them, we view it as failure. As opposed to going, if I have a go at this, you know, I had a long standing goal to be... Um, a single figure handicapper at golf. That was always my, but I, I never bothered. I wasn't committed. It was yeah. always a pipe dream. It was never real. And then I knuckled down and focused on it. Um, but I never beat myself up because I always rationalized it by going, you haven't put the work in, you haven't put the work in. Um, and actually it is a process and it will click and it will come and, you know, Every time I played a shot that didn't quite work, I learned and I looked at that and evaluated, okay, so where do I aim next time or what shape of shot or what type of shot or what club to use? All of that was part of my process to getting there because you can't just go, 
you can't turn up one day and be, oh, I'm single figures. It, you, it, it's an event of many events that, that arrives. But listening to you talk, you've got a very rational relationship with that, right? <laughs> Not when I'm playing. But, but what, yes, <laughs> yeah. What you're saying there, though, is very rational. Put that into a context of someone in a business environment that is being judged, and there's high stakes and there's fine margins. Oh, absolutely. Right. So then, then you go, well, oh, failure. There's no option. I can't fail. I can, I can only succeed. So that then, it's great that you're aiming high, but then you're starting to tip into irrational, emotional. System one. And Jim. comparison bias kicking in because is my boss looking at me or is he looking at you? Judgment. And and now I'm being, yeah. you know, because I've gone for jobs and, and my peers and friends have gone ahead of me. Yeah. Uh, and likewise, I've gone ahead of others in, in different contexts. Yeah. Um, and, and you kind of go, well, I went for that and I didn't get it. And do I feel a sense of shame or embarrassment because they got it and I didn't? What did? What am I missing? What have they got that I haven't got? Um, so you hadn't, in your golf example, attached your self-esteem and your personal worth to becoming a single handicap golfer. But what if, in those examples, I didn't get the promotion, I didn't move ahead? And what if I have attached it? And then it starts to become yeah, dangerous. And, but I'm sure I have in those situations yeah, yeah, where I didn't all get yeah. you know the promotion that I I wanted or I didn't get the pay rise that I aspired to get because I'm going well does that mean I'm not good enough then I'm not worth enough yeah yeah so I think if you come round this you end up going failure uh, failure <laughs> failure <laughs> failure um, failure is inevitable for all of us there's times and it's not going to work you're going to get the, difficult result you're not going to get what you want it's natural we're going to fear it because it's inbuilt because it's shame you know pushed out all that kind of stuff it's natural it's but it's not necessarily helpful so again working on yourself working with others working in the tribes that you're in to think about what do we want rather than what we don't want yeah um and not creating absolutes around win or lose be focus on your what you say your inner voice what is it saying yeah is it focused on win learn like you say or is it looking at everything as an opportunity to grow whether you know there's no kind of win lose concept it's which is win really or, hard win to do grow. really be hard. honest really hard to do because we're all normal so we are going to fear failure but we can manage normal. most of us we can what well, it so it's not about removing it it's about managing it managing it yes agree next time on the question is People can very easily tune out if the communications is missing or there's a gap to it or there's an emotional response to it, you know, because of that that danger in the reaction. So we have to put communications first and foremost and do it often, little and often, precise, specific, um, so that we can we can make sure that we covered that off. To find out how thinking focus can unlock the potential within your organization, go to www.thinkingfocus.com where you'll discover more about the work we do, helping our clients increase productivity and enable change.